Hello everyone. Today we will learn that how to use uh, large language models such as OpenAI to analyze huge amount of the text messages such as tweets. Uh, large language models can understand and also summarize the text message and also provide very accurate uh, analysis. And we will also introduce uh, techniques in large language models which is called uh, prompt engineering that allow large language models uh, to perform better. Uh, so before we start, uh, you need an OpenAI API, which you can find that from OpenAI website. You also need to store your OpenAI API key in a safe place. Uh, so in our case, we are using the AWS Secrets Manager. So for example, uh, if, you are still, if, if you are also using AWS, you can store the API key or you can give the name like API key. And here you just paste uh, your OpenAI API key. It's normally like a very long string. And you can go next. You can give it a name. I just call it OpenAI uh, for the secret. Um, and uh, finally, you will see this Python code. So this piece of code is called a secret manager function that allow you to retrieve uh, the stored credentials like the API keys in, uh, in your Python code. Uh, so I already saved my uh, API key in the secret manager, which is called OpenAI. And feel free to use other approaches, like you can also store the API key in the environment variable or in the configure.ini file. All right. Uh, so let's also talk a little bit about uh, what is large language model. So large language models can be used to predict the next word by using a supervised learning. So for example, if you want to predict this sentence, uh, learning data science in the cloud with AI, so those will be our uh, data set. So the input will be like the first one will be the first part of the sentence. The output will be the next word that we want and also uh, 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 the first part of the sentence and also the following next word, uh, so we continue. So we bring those data set into a supervised learning model, and then we will have a base LM, LM model, so that it is, is trained with a large amount of the training data, which can predict the next word. And then we're going to fine tuning the models with new examples. So in the new examples, uh, in the new examples, the input will be instructions. So for example, like ask, like what's the capital city of the United States? And then the expected output will be the answers or the response uh, to those instructions. For example, the, the capital city is Washington, DC. And then human will read the quality of those uh, large language model output, and then we are fine tune the models by using the reinforcement learning from the human feedback. Okay, so let's go ahead and start our models. So first, we're going to load, uh, we are going to use this uh, AWS secret manage function to load API keys. And then we also need to install the OpenAI package, so pip install OpenAI. Uh, I already installed, so that's that's why the set requirement already uh, satisfied. And the next, we're going to define a help function that can uh, receive messages and also gen and uh, also retain the response from the large language models. So here you can see we uh, we use this uh, secret manager function to pass an OpenAI key. And also we create a client, and we define this help function that require that will receive users' messages. Uh, the user defined model, so the default model we are using GPT-40, and also the temperature. So you can also uh, specify the temperature. The default value is zero. Okay, so let's go ahead and define that uh, function. Okay, so what is a temperature? So so in large language models, uh, temperature can control that how creative the model responds. So lower temperatures, for example, zero, will be 
a more consistent and also reliable response. So every time if you give a prompt, they will give you the same response. Uh, high temperature, for example, 1.0, uh, 0.8 will be more creative and also the response will be more diverse. So for example, every time we give a same prompt, the, the uh, LMM can give you different responses. Uh, tokens and also models. So large language models predict actually tokens, uh, not words. So tokens are the commonly occurring sequence of the characters. And if you go to this website, and you will have a bad understanding of the tokens. So, so for example, here I type a sentence, and you can see that prompt engineering, those are the uh, very popular characters. So each single word refers one token. However, OpenAI is not a very popular word uh, in English. So you can see that uh, it divide into two tokens that is open and also AI. So a uh, large language models predict the next tokens to be more specific. And uh, in English, uh, each token is about four characters. So 100 tokens is about 75 words that in English. So uh, you can use this website Okay, uh, to have a very accurate estimate of the tokens uh, in your data set. And why we need to understand this? So because different models, they have the different capacity to handle a um, different number of the tokens. So if you check the OpenAI models, and you can see that uh, for GPT 3.5, they can handle this number of the uh, tokens in the prompt and they can generate this number of the tokens in the output and if you look at the the model that we're using which is gpt 4.0 so that is a, a flash like model right now on openai so the capacity of the tokens increased dramatically and also it can also generate long output so the tokens that in output also increased and also, GPT-40 is uh, performing better. So uh, then the GPT-3.5, uh, it's also more expensive. So, so you need to consider that which model you're going to use. For example, do you want a better performance or do you want uh, uh, process more tokens? Uh, in our uh, example, we are using, uh, by default, uh, we are using GPT-40, and also by default, the temperature is always zero. All right, uh, so in large language models, there are three different types of the roles. They are system, user, and assistant. So users just are the instructions that we typed to GPT-4, so like the prompt that we typed to GPT-4. And assistant are the GPT-4, the response that uh, uh, GPT-4 that returned. We can also provide content for the assistant. So for example, if we want to show that what are the right output, so we can type some examples uh, in the content uh, to assistant. So it's called a uh, few short prompting. Uh, system is like that other roles that can define uh, the behavior of the assistant. Uh, so you can like uh, what are the overall tones of the assistant and also how do you behave uh, assistant so you can write the, the requirement that in the by using this assistant role. So let's look at a very simple example. So uh, in this example um, we are just using a single role that is a user and that is the content that is what's a capital city of the United States. Okay, so let's run this uh, prompt, and also by using this open air help function, uh, we can see the written result is that the capital city is Washington, D.C. Uh, so next time, next we're going to, we add a one system role. So in this one, we give uh, instruction that, okay, so you're going to act 
uh, response like a high school teacher. We also uh, change the temperature to 0.8 so that uh, it may give us more diverse response. So let's try this one. Uh, the first time that it gave just gave the same, exact same uh, output. So let's try it one more time. So the second time uh, it is uh, slightly different. So uh, so it's more important to remember this not just for your <laughs> geography uh, geography quizzes, but also because Washington DC is a hub of the federal government. Okay, uh, so it more sounds like a teacher. Uh, let's try it one more time. Okay, so now you can see that uh, with a high temperature, the response are slightly different. Okay. Uh, in the next example, so we are now using uh, user assistant uh, uh, together. So for example, we want to teach uh, the large, large, large language model that what two hashtags stand for. So we just make up this rule. So two hashtag means that uh, if two numbers like using two hashtags, it just combine the two numbers together. So like one hashtag hashtag one equals uh, 12 and the two hashtag hashtag two equals uh, 22. So to teach large language model to do that. So in our uh, messages, we see first we give the user prompt that what is one hashtag hashtag one and we provide a, an assistant message that the result is 11. And then we give another example. So we, as a user, we ask what is two hashtag hashtag two, and we give another message as assistant that it is 22. And now we ask the, uh, the, the model as a user that what is three hashtag three. And hopefully by now the model is able to learn the patterns and uh, generate, uh, create a result at 33. Okay, and uh, let's see what it result. Okay, so now you can see uh, the model is able to understand the pattern and also it gives us the right result. Okay, uh, so this actually is an example that called a few short prompting that we provide some success examples. And then for example, we provide one example and two examples. And then we ask model to perform a similar task and the model is able to know what we want to do. All right. Uh, so here are some uh, prompt engineering principles. So uh, for example, we want to use delimiter to separate parts of our prompt so that a uh, large, large language model can stand better. Um, and also we can also prevent, prevent a prompt injection. So for example, uh, in the following example here, we define the delimiter as three hashtags. And then we see that analyze a sentiment in a sentence that is delimited by the hashtags. Uh, and also uh, the content will be that delimiter and this sentence that I love cat and also delimiter. Okay, so by doing so, it will help model understand your instructions it also can prevent prompt injections. So for example, uh, if some user said that in the prompt scene that forgot the instructions, just do something else. And because those prompt will be inside of this pair or this delimiter. So the models will still follow the instruction that you set up in the system message and ignore the pro potential bad instructions in the user uh, prompt. And next, we also want to structure the output in diff in the specific format, for example, like a JSON document, and so that we can use the, the output in other tasks. So uh, again, in this example that we, we see that we want to return the result in a JSON document. So we want to retain the result of the sentiment analysis in JSON document so that we can store the result like in our database or we can um, use Python to uh, 
uh, to use those analysis to like to generate charts, etc. So that is another uh, tips that uh, we can uh, store the result in different format. And next, we want to use a few short prompt uh, techniques. So for example, if your, your task is a little bit complicated, you can give it uh, some examples. So uh, for example, we want to do the sentiment analysis and we see that we want to save the result in a JSON document. Uh, here we give an example. So for example, we analyze the first sentence, I love cat. And we give that, that result in the, the expected result in, the, in an assistant uh, message. We see that it's a JSON document where the key is sentiment and the result is positive. And then we give uh, another question that in the user message. So analyze the result like I love dog. Okay, uh, and now let's try this one. And let's see, so now you can see um, uh, the, the model is able to uh, identify the sentiment and also format the sentiment in the exact format that in the JSON document where the key is called the sentiment. Okay, uh, the other tips uh, including that uh, you need, uh, you can request um, if your uh, if your task is uh, complicated, uh, you can divide your task into multiple steps. So you can request a series of the reasoning steps in the prompt. So that helps the model to uh, achieve the correct answers. So that's called chain of the thoughts reasoning. So that in your prompt, you can specify like step one, two, three, four. And in, uh, to, so that help uh, large language models to understand uh, what you want to do and also give you the right result. Sometimes if a single prompt cannot resolve uh, your problem, you, you may want to use multiple prompts. So that is the chain of the prompts. So that means that we can split the task into multiple prompts and each prompt can focus a subtask and then we can combine those uh, prompts together in Python. Um, the benefit will be that it can save tokens. So for example, if you want to analyze a large number of the text message, you can use one prompt to do the general analyze and also use another prompt just to, uh, to use a result from the, an from the analysis, but instead of using the large, uh, uh, large data set again. And also, it can also involve human input. So for example, uh, it can give you more flexibilities that you can, how do you handle the result from different prompts and also how do you combine those multiple prompts together to build your data analysis pipeline. You can also use, use external tools that by using multiple prompts. And finally, uh, it is a, a iterative process so that uh, uh, you may give it a prompt, like say analyze the data, and then you have the response. Uh, you may not happy with the response, so so then you can just give more details based on the uh, the output. So rewrite your prompt, redefine your prompt based on the result, so you can identify what are the errors, and also, or you may also want to give more clear guidelines, and and then hopefully uh, the model will give you the better results. Uh, you can also try the prompt with different data set and then just repeat those steps like uh, rewrite your prompt and also get uh, better results. All right, so let's start uh, analyze our data so and using those uh, prompt engineering techniques. So our data, uh, I'm using a Twitter data which is in this uh, text message. It contains about like say more than 1000 tweets uh, if you are interested in analyzing Twitter data, you can check my tutorial, uh, my uh, my tutorials on collecting Twitter data. So first, we're going to load the data, and also we load data into a tweets uh, variable. Uh, and now we are going to use uh, uh, the 
OpenAI to summarize the tweets. So we first we want to summarize tweets with uh, delimiters. So um, and also uh, when um, based on the output, so we want to change the size of the sum uh, of the the summary. So for example, if we feel like it's too long, we want it shorter. Uh, we can also ask uh, the model to focus on different perspectives. So let's go start. So first, uh, we're going to analyze 10 tweets uh, from our data set. And then our prompt is that, so provide a brief summary of the tweets. And then uh, the 10 tweets is in the user message. And and let's see the result. So, so here this is a summary of the tweets. So the tweets are are talking about elections because we have a upcoming election. Um, uh, so you can see people talk about different candidates uh, uh, from different uh, parties, and also the other uh, people that are uh, involved in the in the elections. So we feel that this summary is too long. So in our second example, we say limit a summary to 20 words. Okay, so we want a shorter uh, summary. So we, uh, so we uh, run this code, and also you know, now you can see it's a more concise summary that uh, those are tweets discuss the elections, uh, voter fraud, etc. And the next, uh, we also want to see that whether people uh, Mentioning AI, so see, uh, summary the tweets, summarize the tweets, and also see whether people, how people talk about AI in this election. We also want to limit the number of the summary to the 50 words. Okay. And you can see that the tweets focus on the uh, election, so the political discussions. Uh, none of the tweets mention AI, so that's, that's fine. So. Uh, from those 10 tweets, so no one mentioned AI, so that's nice to know. Um, OpenAI also has an uh, endpoint called uh, moderation, so that they can find out potential flagged tweets. For example, some tweets, they, they may talk about promote violence or harassment or something that uh, uh, is not appropriate. So we can use uh, the, the moderation endpoint to check the tweets. And if there's a tweet that has been flagged, we want to print in which category uh, the tweet was flagged. Okay, so we define this a flag helper function. And then we just use this help function uh, to process part of the tweets. So we are processing the tweets at the, the, uh, between the tweets uh, 60 and 70. Uh, because I know there are two tweets that uh, will be flagged. Okay, so let's define this function and also process the tweets. Okay, so you can see there's one tweet that is flagged because of violence, and also uh, there is another tweet that is being flagged because of the harassment. So if you are interested, you can of course print the tweet uh, text message and see exactly why they are being flagged. So I'm not going to show the tweets here. All right, uh, so large language model can also do uh, transformations. For example, they can translate your language into different, uh, it, they can translate your, your text uh, into different languages, or they can translate into different tones or different format. So uh, in this example, we are going to translate 10 tweets uh, into Chinese, uh, because I speak Chinese. You can also feel free to translate the, the tweets into other languages. And also, we are also going to translate the same tweets in the tone of the six years old. So I think it might be uh, interesting to see that how a six years old kid talk about elections. Okay, so let's see that. So first, we translate into in, uh, into Chinese. And what we can tell is that uh, uh, they don't translate all the words. For example, if that's a username, so they don't translate that one. If that's a URL, and they don't translate that as well. And also, 
how can we let's translate that into uh, six years old okay so oh, you can see those are the translated words so those are very nice so um <laughs> I'll find some, I'll play a sneaky name. Um, uh, no worry about toy weapons. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so that's how a uh, six years old talk about elections. Um, another very nice uh, function or tool that a large language model is that they can infer or extract information from those um, uh, text messages. So for example, uh, we can use large language model to identify sentimentals, identify emotions. We can also extract the uh, mentioned people's name. And also we can see whether, since they are talking about elections, so we can also see whether or not they support uh, Democratic or Republicans. We also ask the, uh, the model to store data in a JSON document so that we can uh, analyze those results later. So, so here are the prompt. So we see analyze the tweets that uh, delimited by those delimitators. Uh, and also we said that you're going to use those follows, uh, the following steps. So it's a chain of the thought. So step one, identify sentiment in a single word, either positive or negative or neutral. Uh, step two, identify the emotions with a single word like angry, happy, etc. Uh, step three, uh, identify the mentioned people name. Step four, so detect whether that a tweet support democratic or republican. Please ignore my typos. Return the result in a single word. And finally, we ask the model to organize data in a JSON document. We also tell the keys that they need to use, so like uh, to store the sentiment, you need to sent store that in a sentimental key. Uh, to store the emotion mass uh, information, you need to store that in this emotion key. We also tell the model that do not wrap the JSON code in the JSON markers, just return the JSON document. Okay, and in the user message, we just pass uh, those tweets. Okay, so for each single tweet, so we also use a for loop to process each single tweet. OK, and you can see here those are the results. So for the first tweet, it is positive. The emotion is supportive. And they support Democratic Party. And also those are the mentioned users. Um, And we also have the tweet that support Republicans, where the sentiment is negative, uh, the emotion is distrust. Um, and also, this is the mentioned people that in that single tweet. All right. Um, next, we want to identify the, the most common topics. So our prompt is that uh, identify the tweets, uh, analyze the tweet, analyze the tweets and also identify the 10 topics. We also want to store the data in the JSON document. We also pass a 10 tweets to this uh, prompt. You can see here, those are the 10 topics like election day donations, uh, local versus national pol uh, politicals, vote fraud, uh, etc. Okay. And this is our uh, final exam. So example. So, uh, so here uh, we are going to use multiple prompts. So we are going to use a prompt that we defined earlier. So for example, we are going to define which party received the majority support. Uh, and also we are going to define the, the sentiments and also emotions for the mentioned users. Uh, we are going to pass those results that in the system message. And then we are going to create a chatbot to answer users' queries by using uh, the, the tweets and also by using those uh, uh, analysis, the summaries. Okay, so this time we are going to process like 100 tweets. So we want to give it uh, uh, more context. And 
we will receive all the results in this uh, anal analysis result uh, list. So here we are using, you can see in the first prompt, we're using the same prompt to do the sentiment analysis, etc. Okay. And in the once we have all the uh, results, so for example, identify the sentimentals, uh, identify the emotions, and also extract people, and also see which uh, party they support. Uh, once we have all the results, so we save the result into this analyst result. Okay, uh, so once we have those uh, results that we uh, process each single tweet, we are using a second prompt to summary those uh, analysis. So uh, here you can tell that we are an we are asking the model that to count uh, the number to that support different parties and also identify the common sentiments and also emotions to each mentioned people. We also tell the, uh, the model to organize the data in a JSON document. Okay, so we are analyzing the result that from the previous prompt. And now we can see uh, how the result look like. Okay, uh, so we can see that in the in the 100 tweets that we have 16 support uh, Democratic and also 36 support Republicans. We have also a lot of tweets that uh, cannot identify the which uh, which party they support. We also have the mentioned users like Harris, and those are the sentimentals, so uh, positive, negative, neutral. And we have the Donald Trump, uh, negative, neutral, and also the, the associated emotions. Okay, so now we have this summary of this analysis. And now we are going to pass all the information into this uh, system message. So, so here we have a uh, very long system message that uh, uh, to provide instructions for our chatbot. See, you are an election chatbot, answer user questions based on the tweets. So we provide tweet samples, so those are 100 tweets. We also ask the model that if the uh, user mentioned the name in this analysis summary, okay, and then report the, the corresponding sentimental and also emotions. And then we define this uh, chat function. So uh, we're going to append all the, uh, all the user prompt and also the existent uh, content into this uh, chat so that uh, the model will know that what we talked in the past, uh, so that know the context. Okay, so let's define this uh, function. And now we are going to start this chat by using this uh, while loop. Okay, so let's ask, who are you? It said, I'm a chatbot. Answer your questions based on information from some tweets. Okay, so that is defining our system message. And let's see whether or not they can remember uh, our chat context. So, my name is Andy. Okay, hello Andy. And what is my name? Okay, your name is Andy. Great. So you can see they they do remember the the, uh, uh, the history of the chat. Okay, so who will win the election? That's a hard question. And let's see. Uh, I can predict future. However, I can share some general insights based on the current discussions. Uh, okay, so which party receives more support? And you can see that from information provided, which means that the the analysis summary, uh, Republican Party is mentioned more frequently uh, compared to the Democratic Party. Okay, uh, so that uh, so that they are still using the the analysis that in our results. 
and let's see what does people talk about Harris okay and in the data set it's a discussion about Harris reflect range of those sentiment emotions like positive negative neutral um, and those emotions positive frustration motivated um, what does people talk about Trump okay and they return the uh, sentiment for the Trump so negative neutral anger outrage uh, etc uh, you can also ask more specific questions so um, let's see let's look at the the topics so uh, let's see let's talk about the vote fraud concerns okay what do people talk about vote fraud concerns so that's one topic identified discussion is in this and often associated with uh, about okay okay indicate that is all right uh, so now I want to expand this topic so I really want to know that what people talk about what fraud concerns uh, let's see if GPT is able to understand this question okay uh, very nice certainly so our uh, so here's some detailed look also so many individuals worry about the potential for what to impact uh, also some sense of amount group towards the system frustrations also fr uh, frustration when discussed about polarized um, and also political tools impact please policy okay uh, the real concern okay very nice uh, all right uh, so again so the GPT is limited by the number of tokens that we provided in the system message so if you really have a huge amount of data uh, the model cannot process or understand the entire data set uh, if you really want model to provide more relevant information or like semantic search you need to use uh, a vector database you need to use embeddings a vector database and also RAG which we will talk in the future video uh, in the future videos and also finally so uh, those are the uh, tutorials that I learned when we when I create uh, this video so that I I took the class from the uh, deep learning.ai prompt engineering for developers and also building system with the chat GPT API and also uh, OpenAI document is a great resource where they provide the the, uh, the, the demo codes and also very detailed uh, examples